OK, I think we're back. And you should be able to see my screen. Uh, so I'll be giving a, a quick overview, about 10 minutes of announcements and features from the CISREV team uh, to jump into it. Uh, Dr. Peller announced the mutation effects on therape therape therapeutic outcomes project. We're working on this project with Dr. Peller, the Miyoto project. Uh, what we're really interested in doing is collecting evidence about precision medicine and prostate cancer. And we're going to be starting on mutation effects. Uh, so we've actually already started doing a lot of work here. Uh, we've screened about 10,000 documents, really a tremendous amount of work uh, by a relatively small team. I'm not going to be announcing anything about this figure just to show that we're starting to get into the actual analysis page. It's certainly not a final figure in, in any way. Um, however, we are still looking for reviewers. We've started the data extraction page. Uh, if you're a reviewer in this space, uh, if you're a person who manages reviews, if you're a librarian, we still need help. Um, and we'd love to work with you on this project. So you can help us build a precision med medicine database. This will be resulting in publications as well. And of course, if you participate, we'd love for you to participate in the publication too. Um, if you think you can actually do review, that's fantastic. If you have advice on how to run these things, uh, we would love to learn from you. So please give me a ping. Uh, Tom at sysrev.com is the way to contact me if you're interested in participating. We're also looking for analysts. Uh, we do a lot of data analysis ourselves. Uh, if you're if you're sort of a little bit past a beginner with R, if you're a novice, or even if you're an expert, we could really use your help. If you're a novice, we could probably teach you a little bit. If you're an expert, maybe you can teach us a little bit about how to do these things. And uh, yeah, we'll be curating a really large database. Uh, so hopefully we have some data that might be interesting to you in your research. Uh, and hopefully you can help us to uh, understand that data and, and publish about it. So. One last time, we're looking for reviewers and analysts for the Miyoto project. Uh, if you think you want to participate, uh, please give me a ping at tom at sysrev.com. So let me jump into some feature updates on sysrev.com. Uh, these are going to be a little bit uh, nitty gritty, but we'll get into a little bit of philosophy of, of systematic review as well. Uh, so stay tuned. First, let me announce that we have an update to group labels. Uh, actually, we just pushed this update yesterday. So what is a group label? When we started building CISREV as an application, many of the people we spoke with said that they use Excel for that. And uh, Excel is actually very powerful for doing this kind of thing. It's difficult to compete with Excel. Uh, it works really, really well. But it does have some challenges, particularly when you start to collaborate and, uh, and potentially around organization of data. So the way group labels work is within a CISREV, you can create a group label. And that group label is essentially a spreadsheet that you have within a CISREV. Uh, you can think of it as like a sheet in a workbook for a specific article. Uh, you can have multiple group labels in, for, for a project. So you might track interventions, as we are in the Miyoto project, and, and outcomes, or interventions and population and, con and comparator and outcome, a PICO study. You can build a, a group label for each of those things. You can see that the user interface, if you've used these labels before, has been updated. You can now search within group labels. You can actually treat them as spreadsheets. Uh, so you can toggle the mode of the group label. Uh, you can copy and paste data out of the spreadsheets. You can treat them really like you would an Excel spreadsheet, uh, but embedded within the CISREV application. Um, what's coming in the future with uh, group labels, and actually our basic labels as well, are embedded or hierarchical labels. These are really complex labels. Uh, first, you might think about having a label that says drug. You know, so what is a drug? Well, you might define some criteria for defining a drug. You might say, you know, it has a name, it has a trade name. Um, maybe if you're talking about a therapy, you might say there's a dosage that's associated with it or some other metadata that you want your reviewers to associate with a drug. You could then create a column in your group label that says this is a drug column and embed that more complex information. We're also going to allow you create, to create group labels within group labels. Probably sounds like a complex concept, but the, the basic idea is that if you have uh, something like a, a population and intervention and outcome, so you're trying to track uh, the outcomes for patients and you want to know what defined the patient group, what defined the patient intervention, what defined the outcome, we want to allow you to do that all in one uh, group label. And we'll provide tools making it easier to fill out uh, spreadsheets around that. And. Uh, Oh, sorry, I just got a message. Um, yeah, so you can see some of these some of these uh, group labels uh, for, from the Miyoto project. We have the interventions uh, label, and we have a relative population outcomes label. This is really a place where if you're an expert in this space, we'd love to get your feedback on how to construct these labels uh, in the best possible way. You can see that they can get fairly complex. 
We're also building tools now around living review. We re recently pushed an update that allows you to integrate living sources from PubMed. So the way this works is you create a PubMed search on Cicerev. Uh, in this case, I'm searching for Angry Bees. You then edit that source, and uh, you can leave a note on the source uh, saying what the source is all about. You can also click the Check New Results button. And what that will do is if you check new results, you'll get a notification anytime a new article matching your search criteria uh, is available, and you'll have the option to to import that article or not import that article. Uh, yeah, so you'll be able to get notified for new articles matching your searches. That allows you to easily integrate new articles from all of your sources. You can have a lot of different sources, and eventually, this will actually feed into the machine learning system. Uh, so right now, Cicero automatically builds screening models. It actually builds models for all of your binary and categorical variables. Eventually, what can happen once we finish this, the, the box is red because it's not complete yet, is uh, you can actually have the living source say, hey, there's a new article. That article will run through your screening model, and you'll be able to say, OK, not only did the source have a new article, but the article actually also met my screening criteria according to the machine learning model. If you have a particularly automatable review, all of the other uh, uh, models for your review, the binary and categor categorical label models, will run. And uh, in principle, you can have a fully automated living review where new articles are coming in, all of the models are running. And as an analyst, you can subscribe to those data streams and create downstream applications or interesting research based on them. As an aside, you could also just build a, a news feed for yourself. So you could subscribe to all of the, uh, all of the new articles for cancer research uh, or epilepsy research. And you could start screening them yourself and say, uh, this article, uh, is interesting to me, this one is not. And then Cicero will eventually be able to tell you a new article meet, meeting the cancer search showed up and it passed your screening criteria, might be an interesting read for you. I mentioned notifications. Some of you may have noticed that there's a big red bell on Cicero now. Uh, if you go to your notifications page, we'll let you know whenever a new article has been reviewed, whenever new people join your team, uh, how many articles reviewed, uh, and also that living source. Uh, feature is inbuilt to this, so you can know when new articles hit your review. Uh, this really allows you to track your prog your your projects. I was really excited when this when this uh, feature hit. Uh, it was great to see all the work being done on the Miato project, having uh, having lots of people reviewing articles. Really gives you a sense of there's a lot of activity here, uh, rather than just looking at the dashboard and seeing the graphs go up. You can see in real time. Actually, it updates in real time um, that articles are getting reviewed and and you're getting notifications about it. Eventually, we'll have an optional periodic email report, uh, so you can get an email once a week saying, uh, you know, this many articles were reviewed, this many people joined your project, and other notifications that people think are valuable. If you have your own idea for something you want to be notified about on Cicerev, please let us know. Okay, so now I get to dig in a little bit into what's coming soon. Looks like we're still okay on time. Uh, we tried really hard to get this in for today, but it didn't quite get there in time. Uh, this, this feature should be shipping in the next one to two weeks. Uh, we call this shared labels. And the idea is actually bringing open source concepts to data annotation. So creating structure, and what I mean by that in this, in this context is really creating labels, is really hard. And it's done really redundantly. Um, a lot of the public reviews we see are using a lot of the same labels. Uh, a great example of a widely used uh, structure is the mesh terms in PubMed. So mesh terms are really like a controlled vocabulary uh, with, that, with relationships between the terms in that vocabulary. Uh, at the top level, someone might say cancer. That's a really important term. But not only is it important to the person who authored that, they know that other people will kind of understand what they're talking about. And we can agree upon what it means for for neoplasms or cancer to be assigned to a document. Uh, and by we, really we mean globally. We can all kind of have this shared understanding of that term. And then you can create a subterm, you know, prost prostate cancer neoplasms. And really as you get more specific in your terms, there are different communities that all understand what that term means. Uh, creating that structure is extremely difficult. You need people to be uh, you know, highly experienced in, in a field to understand what terms to create, but they also need to be experienced in, in a knowledge organization. You know, what's a good term to put at a high level or a low level? How do we define the relationships between these things? 
it's extremely difficult. And uh, if mesh terms weren't used, if mesh terms were only used by three or four people, it certainly would not be worth the effort. Um, but by distributing those mesh terms to the whole world, it becomes an extremely valuable resource of shared understanding. So that sharing structure facilitates shared understanding. In fact, a lot of what people do in document review is they're, they're overlaying their own structure on a document substrate. Uh, so they're saying, you know, we want to have this well-defined outcome label, maybe, uh, uh, maybe overall survival uh, for reviewing clinical trials. And we want to make sure that we're extracting overall survival in a specific form from each document. Uh, if you do that, then, then you teach everybody what that term means, and you teach them how to do that extraction, and it propagates a shared understanding of that concept. By having that consistent structure, uh, you also enable shared an standard analyses. This is really powerful because it lets us build, build a code pipe into the, into the document world. Uh, so we can actually start taking those shared labels that overall survival apply to each clinical trial, and we can say, let's create a force plot for that, or let's create a distribution. And that can allow us to understand trends in research. Right now, a lot of those shared structures are created by organizations, uh, large organizations, expert organizations. Uh, NCBI creates them. Prospero creates guidelines for systematic review. Cochrane creates uh, guidelines for how to do things. And those are really valuable efforts. Um, but there's no real reason that they need to be locked behind uh, an organization. A really good example of this is uh, Wikipedia versus Encarta. Once we allowed anybody to start contributing to worldwide knowledge, uh, the value of that uh, encyclopedia grew dramatically. We want to do the same thing with creating uh, labels, with creating uh, shared labels. So anybody will be able to create their own kind of label. And if they create a good label, then it should propagate through the community. Uh, and the community will be able to iterate on that label. You know, someone creates uh, a, a, a new categorical label for, uh, for chemicals. And, uh, and that can propagate to everyone who agrees on ident identifiers for chemicals or something like that. So the way this will be implemented is there are reviews. All of your reviews will still have the labels that you create for those reviews, but you'll have the opportunity to import labels into your reviews. Uh, and so what you see here, maybe that top review is a toxicological study. Uh, where you're looking at chemicals and species and, and toxicological outcomes. Uh, and that bottom review is maybe a study of clinical trials where you're looking at population, chemical, outcome. And here, outcome means something different. I'll uh, put out outcome in both of these just to emphasize that we're not going to force people to use some sort of shared name for their labels. Uh, you'll be able to import the shared labels. That makes sense. And uh, everything will work in terms of exporting data. Labels get their own unique identifiers that are that's distinct from their name. So you'll still be able to use your own names. All of this is working already on the development side. Basically, you'll create labels, you'll copy a code to share your label, and you'll be able to, to uh, give that code to anyone, and they'll be able to import your labels into their projects, or you'll be able to reuse the labels from one project to another, or possibly have a project that takes labels from any different projects. So we're super excited about this concept, and it should be coming soon. Our last slide here is a, a few of the other features that that we're updating soon. Uh, usernames, this is by popular demand. We don't want to restrict people to having um, having to use the prefix on their email as their username. You'll be able to change, change your username as you like. You'll still have a unique ID for your username. There's going to be an update in the UI. Uh, we think that we need to add a, a, a new glossy finish to the platform. But more importantly, we need to uh, uh, improve navigation between projects. If you're looking at a project, you should be able to easily go to your other active projects. You should be able to easily go to your teams. Uh, many people who create teams don't often go to their team page. And we think that's because we've sort of failed on, on a navigation side. So we'll be improving that. And we've received a lot of requests to incorporate deduplication. This one's going to take us a little bit longer, but it's high on our roadmap. And uh, we do hope to incorporate that feature in, in the next few months. OK, that's it. We have a big team behind this, or I guess still a small team, but it's growing. It feels big to me now. Um, here are a lot of the people working on this. Uh, there's myself and TJ, who you met today. We have a lot of developers working on this, James and Marta and John. Jeff didn't want to share his picture for today. Uh, and Lillian is our, our, our newest uh, person working on these projects. She's particularly involved in the Miyoto project. So Lillian, if you're here today, welcome to the team. And uh, thank you all so much. This has been a real pleasure. We want to do this regularly. Uh, and if you're interested in talking about your own work, 
uh, please contact us. We may be contacting you. Uh, we'd love to hear from, from other people doing exciting research in this space in the future. Thank you.